In this video we're going to be looking at step one configuration of the new timetable functionality in Edge. The new part being that we've aligned the steps back from nine to eight and we've added an automatic option for those schools that would like Edge to help them generate classes and allocate students. That is a choice you have. So we're on the first page uh, configuration for timetabling here and this is assuming you've set up all your courses and related uh, aspects under the curriculum menu down the left hand side here in this case ready for 2016. To check that you've done those or we provide a checklist for that under curriculum we've got timetable prerequisites and in here you've got a, a checklist system that you can go through and make sure that you've done uh, what's required to, before uh, moving on with your timetable. So check the details there if you're happy with that. Give it a tick. Locations defined, so that's your rooming. So uh, for your classes, assuming that's correct. Down here it tells us how many courses we've got defined and we can use the link to go and check that if we wanted. You've assigned students to courses. And so you've got some data to actually work with as you move through the timetable. This is um, especially important if you're doing the automatic um, timetabling process. And really important that you've got uh, your school calendar defined um, for the year that you're going to be timetabling for. And to check this one, so we can go use the technique we highly recommend uh, right through using Edge is right click on a link, open link in the new tab, and then we can go to that tab there and we can use the uh, year selector up the top right. So we're currently on 2015, we can move through to 2016. And we, uh, as in Muzak, predefined some dates taken from the um, MOE calendar and uh, pop those in there and you're free to click in and edit to match your school calendar. And once it's saved, you'll get the number of uh, half days popping up here. Of course, further down, uh, you may already, if you're well ahead of the game, have some other dates where you can add event days, like if it's a swimming day and you only want to mark the roles once, you can use that functionality. You won't know about any closed days at this point in time, but you may know about teacher-only days, and so it's a good idea to factor those in uh, as early as possible, and then Edge won't create roles uh, for that day. Further down, again, we've taken from the MOE uh, website the... Um, holidays and things like that but if there is one that we haven't um, put in there please use the add a holiday down there and put in the date and again Edge will not generate roles for that day. So once you've done that it's all saved we can close that tab and we can go back to where we were tick that yep job done and then we begin to uh, get our timetable ready uh, in earnest. So we can go back to curriculum down and left to create edit timetable once on the screen, ensure that you're on the year that you're actually wanting to work with. So I'm going to drop down to 2016. If I was starting from scratch, I could click New, uh, but I do have uh, one preset up, so I can choose that from the list. And please note at the bottom of the page here, this is just giving you a quick reference about what changes affect as what, and um, so it's good to have a little refresher to read through that. And of course, if you uh, need some more detail behind the timetabling process you can click help at any time and this will pop open to the relevant page and provide you uh, wordy background and often um, other links to look up the required functionality that you need to know about. So we're back into our timetable and we're going to look at step one configuration. As noted uh, before we've refined it from nine to eight steps uh, but the process is effectively the same apart from the addition of the automatic choice down here. So once you've added in a name for your timetable and the days and in the cycle and the maximum number of periods, you have the choice of manual or automatic. So manual is what we had uh, prior to updating the functionality where the school themselves created the classes uh, largely and allocated that to the lines. Um, edge reported back clashes and things like that. But now we have the um, fully automatic option where mask functionality, which we'll look at in a later video and other related features, helps you to generate optimal lines, giving the students the choices um, they would like to have along with teacher availability and then allocates and creates those classes for you. So once you've got those basics sorted out, we move across to the bands tab and there you're telling the system 
whether you're splitting your timetable. In other words, in this case, year nines and tens are doing a somewhat different timetable structure to the 11s to 15s. Uh, area schools use this quite a bit and they may have three bands. So the below year nines are doing one thing and then so on as we have here. You can manage these bands on the right hand side by adding another one or deleting if you've made a mistake there. Once you've uh, edited the pages you require, you need to click save and then move over to the next one. In this case, cycle periods. Again, this is band related. So we get the drop down to deal with the juniors and the seniors in here. So looking at the juniors, it defaults to having all the ticks in, which means that every period uh, is a teaching period, if you like. You could think of it like that. But if you had one of these slots uh, that was going to be assembly or something like that on a regular basis, you could then untick that and it knows that that is uh, basically a non-teaching period uh, in your cycle. Uh, and you can do the same if we go to uh, the senior cycle. And as you see here, it noted that I had made a change on the page, so it's given me this pop-up to say, are you sure you want to navigate away? And I'm not going to save the, the um, untick if you like, so I'm going to go yes, because I didn't want to save it. And looking at the um, junior school there on that we looked at the junior school now we've got the senior school here we've already got one unticked so that could be designating there was an assembly last period or perhaps they're uh, finishing a little bit early that day and that would be reflected when we generated the period times uh, but this is telling the system what is happening in reality so again once done click save we're going to move over to, over to period times now where you in detail tell the system how each of the bands periods and other uh, breaks etc are working and this is a drag and drop screen and so you've got to tell exactly the system exactly how things are going to be um, shown on here it's defaulted at the moment to the senior school and we can use the items on the left hand side and drag them onto the page to show exactly the times that periods and form times breaks lunch are uh, all occurring the usual method is to set up Monday, so work vertically, dragging the relevant items in there. And then once you've got Monday uh, as required, you can click make all days like Monday, and it'll copy those items to the right, and then you can edit to suit um, as if days have differences. And we can see that uh, Thursday in this case is uh, rather different from the other days there. Mousing over each of the slots pops up how much time is available. And to edit each of these blocks, if we mouse carefully over the bottom and top, we can then drag these periods uh, to resize them. Okay, there's half hour slots that they jump to in there. And if we uh, actually mouse over it, we can see in this case it's period 1, 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Up here, we've got 4 a.m., 8.45 to 9. If we uh, didn't want a particular uh, slot on there, we can just see the cross that's um, appeared as we mouse over, we can click it to uh, remove that period. Again, once you're happy with the setup there, make sure you do it for both bands. And then we can roll down here and click save. The last uh, tab button on this page is the connect option lines. This was if you used our timetabling software already or functionality in Edge already, you would have found this further down um, associated with option lines, but we've moved it to be part of the configuration. So in here, we default for A lines A through F in a repeating cycle uh, based on um, what you're doing. So we've got our six days here um, and our periods through the day down there. Um, what you need to do is uh, edit to suit what you're planning to do with your timetable. So we see this as um, you know part of the basic configuration. Many, many schools will have differences for different year levels. So we've got the tick box on the left hand side here, show individual year levels. We give that a tick, opens that up and then we can go and tailor uh, probably specifically year nines and tens uh, where they're not having options. If you're, if you're using core classes, uh, and not options all the way through, you can then go and tailor this. For example, if Monday um, period uh, one, the year nines were not having an option class, they were all um, going to their core classes, then we can click that drop down and we suggest you use an unused option letter and that usually is N1, the very last one. And we click that and that tells the system not to put anything designated as a, a year uh, in this case a line A option 
for the inines into that slot. So it'll be blank, and once you get through to modify timetable, we can manually tweak uh, your timetable. You'll be able to drop in the relevant class or classes in there. A star appeared, asterisk if you like, uh, when we change that, and that's telling us shows that option lines are different on some year level. So it's just a little telltale around that. So you work your way through, down through the periods and across the days, uh, showing the exact title, uh, sorry, the exact cycle of your timetable. And once you've gone through there, again, click Save. Got a print button there if you wanted that as a reference so you know what the cycle is. And that completes the um, configuration page, basically the getting started. A um, couple of little things before we finish this video. Um, the versioning here. If this was a live timetable, then as you, there would be a button to say make changes and it would click the version up by one, basically giving you a backup. So you're not editing the live timetable if it was already in action through your school. Uh, you'd be working on effectively a new copy of it. But you also do have copies. So if you create your timetable, basically probably right through to the end, uh, and then you've got variations that occur at different blocks of time through the year, the cycles for juniors. You can then use the copy button to um, give a mirror image of that timetable, give it a slightly different name, so it could be 2016 two month timetable uh, rotation two perhaps, and then you can edit that. And in the very last step, once you've got it edited, um, probably in uh, step seven, but maybe elsewhere, you would then activate that for a different set of dates, uh, so effectively the timetable ticks over automatically from that point.